Oh yeah, this one is freaking loaded, guys. Ah. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Hey, what's going on, you dirty old catfish lovers? Welcome back to another episode of Downriver Fishing. I'm excited about this one, guys. Today, I'm gonna do a complete breakdown of how I'm able to consistently catch gizzard shad year round. Uh, now, I, I know that one of the most frustrating things about you know chasing these trophy-sized catfish around can be finding fresh bait sometimes, and fresh bait is the most important thing about catfishing. You know, every, everyone knows that it's it's a fact. We're gonna dive in, I'm gonna go over you know, what tools I use, I'm also gonna go over you know, what I'm looking for uh, whenever I'm out hunting for these shad. So, come along with me. First, we're gonna talk about some cast nets. All right guys, so let's talk about what you need to catch gizzard shad. Really, all you truly need is two things. You need a cast net. You need to know how to throw that cast net. That's very important as well. If you don't know how to throw a cast net, I've made a how to throw a cast net video, shocker. Um, you can check it out right here. Um, I, I'm, I'll show you a really good technique of how you can throw and get a real consistent opening. You know that's that's real important when you when you're uh, when you're catching gizzard shad. It's it's crazy, I know, but it's really important to have a good big opening so that you can catch a lot of shad. Now, as far as the cast nets go, I wouldn't buy a real cheap cast net. What you're gonna do is you're gonna make the same mistake I did. You're gonna get something trashy like this. It's gonna have these plastic coated weights. These things are garbage, they're no good, don't do that. Um, I found, um, this is a super spreader cast net. Academy Sports has them for 50 bucks. It's got real lead weight. Um, I've gotten this thing hung up several times. I've repaired it, it still works flawlessly. It's great, um, like I said, 50 bucks. So um, I would snag one of those if I were you guys to start off with. The only con to this net is that it's 3 8 inch mesh. Um, that's one of the smaller mesh sizes and the reason that's a con is because a lot of times I'll pull my net up and I'll have hundreds of those kind of 3 to 4 inch thread fin shad in there and they get stuck all in the net, then they get all in your bow, you step on them, you squish on them, and then you've got old nasty dried up thread fin shad all over your bow. And, and that's a mess and that sucks to deal with so you know I intend on eventually getting a half inch or three eighths, or not three eighths, I'm sorry, five eighths inch mesh um, so that those little ones can swim out. So if you can find a net that, that's a good price for you, you know, that works for you, that has that larger mesh size, I would certainly recommend that. If not, uh, this one works great. This is the box for it. It is, like I said, the super spreader. This thing has been just an absolute steal. Um, I, I'll continue to buy these um, until I can find a better deal. Uh, I mean, you can get the bait busters, you can get the bets, you can get some of these really nice, you know, expensive nets. Um, my thought is that it's probably gonna end up getting hung up, snagged, and you, you know, you're just gonna have to buy a new one. So if you can find one that's cheaper, go that route. That, that's my thinking, y'all do whatever you want, uh, but you're gonna need a cast net. Now, the second tool that you're gonna need is gonna be Navionics. Um, you can get it for free on a computer. You go to, uh, I think it's navionicswebapp.com, or uh, you can download it on your phone, which is super handy to have, it's 10 bucks. Uh, but follow along with me, let's go inside and uh, let me show you guys kind of how I use that app. So we got the computer set up here. Uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how I use the Navionics app to, um, to go in and look for different places to find gizzard shad. And, and I'll go ahead and tell you, you know, what I'm normally looking for is gonna be creeks. So let's dive in here and let's, let's check it out. So first thing, you're gonna wanna go to Navionics web app. No, oh, that's not it. Okay, and then this is gonna pull up the area. This is gonna pull East Tennessee up where I'm at from locations. I'm gonna zoom in here to uh, to my waterways, and I'm just gonna do, uh, I'll do Fort Loud, and that's the, the place that I normally fish, and I can kind of show you, you know, some different some different places and things like that that, uh, that, that I've already kind of, I've, I've gone through this process with already and, and kind of figured it out. So the, the main thing that I like to do is look for creeks 
that have real shallow water in the very back, so little shallow flats. And if you zoom in here a couple times, you can tell when they're real shallow in the back because you'll have kind of like I said these little flats of you know uh, blue that means that it's real shallow if you zoom in here if you zoom in that's not even going to give you a number as to how shallow it is it's just going to show blue so that's what I'm looking for okay so when I'm breaking down a body of water I'm going to look for different creeks you know bigger creeks that have these shallow flats so you got some good ones there you got some good ones here 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 these are all good, um, you know, that looks good, this one looks good. And so what we'll do is after we find a couple, we're gonna zoom in and we're gonna try to figure out, you know, which one's probably got the best chance of holding shad. So this one, um, you can see here, if you zoom in enough, sorry, someone's calling me. This one here, actually has a, a little bridge that goes over it. Um, it, it it's, it's kind of deeper out here, which I like. That gives them somewhere to go if they're feeling a little uncomfortable. Um, the bridge itself also provides some pretty good structure. You know, they love those, those bridge, you know, pylons, the concrete. Uh, you know, collects algae, the, you know, they love to eat the algae, the plankton, all that good stuff. Um, and, and in my opinion, I think that these gizzard shad like to hang out in the in the real shallow water because I think that it, it, it for one that's where the plankton is most of the time so I think that they're there to eat but I also think it makes them feel safer because you know a lot of the bigger fish are gonna hang out in deeper water because it's more comfortable for them so these gizzard shad can kind of get up here in these shallow flats and hang out and they're not you know constantly being destroyed by monster bluefish I mean I know that's what I would be you know most concerned about if I were a bait fish um, but if we break this creek down a little bit more you see we've got a bridge you know we got some separation you, you got a little deeper water you got shallow water we've got some bridge or not some bridges we got some uh, some boat docks here we've got a lot of timber around that means there's probably some timber in the water you know and, th and this goes kind of back it looks like there could possibly be a little feeder creek back here can't really tell from this but either way this looks like a really good place that would hold uh, some shad and in fact this is a really good place that holds shad um, I, I you know I catch shad here pretty often um, the first thing that you want to look for when that, whenever you get to the back of one of these creeks is you want to look for fish that are flipping, okay? And what you'll see is their tails will come up and just kind of just kind of splash the top of the water, It'll be a little bitty ring, you know, and they'll get a little bigger, but it's not like a bass just busting the top. I mean, it's just a little bitty ring. Um, let me show you a, a quick clip of, uh, of some, some shad flipping that I've caught. So you see, that's what you're looking for, okay? But you're not always gonna go to the back of a creek and just see you know, a bunch of them flipping. Um, if you go to the back of a creek and you're not seeing them flip, then, then they may just not be very active at that time. And then what you're gonna have to do is the old eyeball test. You're gonna have to come down here and look for some structure. Um, like I said, boat, docks are really good structure, any kind of pylon. You know, if you've got those concrete uh, walls or anything like that, you know, that can all be really good structure for gizzard chat. So I would throw around those things and, uh, and see if that can produce for you. So that's pretty much my strategy whenever I'm going after these shad is like I said find creeks find real shallow water um, shallow water with some structure throw around that look for the flipping um, definitely if you have a fish finder and you're cruising around definitely keep an eye on it you know you're, you're crazy if you don't um, but more times than not I find the shad just you know doing the eyeball test versus actually using my fish finder um, now, as far as seasons go, I'm going to take you guys over here to this creek. Um, I've, I've caught shad in this creek year round. It's, it's one of my go-to places, especially when I'm fishing this section of the water. And, and I want to show you kind of how these fish migrate around during the different uh, seasons and also in, in different weather. You know, I've caught shad in this creek year round when it's blazing hot out when it's freezing cold uh you know when in fall time and springtime 
caught it in, in crappy weather where the wind's blowing, it's rainy, I've caught it in bluebird skies, okay? And what I've found, and this creek really kind of helped me figure that out, is that shad normally, when they find a place that they really like, in my opinion, I don't think that they really leave it. I think they stay in that creek and they just migrate around. So, for instance, I think whenever, let, let's say, whenever they're real comfortable and everything's good, I think you're going to find them in these shallow flats. And I think that you're going to find them there because the plankton's there, you know, they're away from all the other fish, they feel good, and they're kind of roaming around. Now, as soon as some bad weather blows in or there's a huge change in temperature, I think that these fish kind of school up and they find something to stick to. And in this particular uh, creek, what I found is what they like to stick to is actually, you know, this creek channel right here. So what they'll do is, you know, if I'm not seeing them flip and I'm not catching any near these boat or off these boat docks, I'll come right over here to this ledge and nine times out of 10, that's where they are. Something else is, you know, um, in, in these shallow flats, another reason I think they're there in, a, in, in winter time, you know, let's say, uh, you know, it, it, the water's real cold, well, these shallow flats heat up faster. You know, in these gizzard chat, you know, that's gonna be a lot more comfortable for them. So, you know, in winter time, I think you're gonna find them in these, and I don't think, I, I know, you know, from experience, you're gonna catch them in these shallow flats as well. Um, I mean, in this creek, guys, I've caught them everywhere. I've caught them, you know, right off of this dock. I've caught them all, uh, all off of this little point. This is actually a real rocky point here. Caught them all off of there. Caught them off all these boat docks. Um, now, generally in the winter, you know, the water kind of comes through here. It, it, you know, it drops quite a bit. But in the summer, I've caught them back in here. Caught them off all these boat docks. You know, I've caught them back in here, over here. I mean, I've literally caught them everywhere in this creek, and it's just finding them. You know, like I said, the first thing I do, I pull up, look for the flips. If you see the flips, that's a dead giveaway. They're there. If you don't see the flips, then start throwing over structure. You know, use your fish finder. And now, whenever I am finding them on this ledge, that's about the only time that I really think the fish finder is really helpful because at that point, you can kind of pinpoint them down a little bit more instead of just like kind of throwing every couple feet, you know, moving your way up or down, you know, that ledge. Um, but guys, that's pretty much it. I, I'm about to take you all. Uh, I'm going to show you guys kind of a clip that I put together uh, the other day of me actually going out and catching these shad, you know, with the net. And real quick, what I want to show you is kind of what it looks like on, on this map here. So what I've done is, you know, I found a creek back here again. It's got the same deal that I like. You know, it's got real shallow flats, you know, in the very ends of these creeks. It's got lots of boat docks, lots of structure for them to, to, to hang out with. And it's also got some deeper water as well so that they can move in and out, you know, whenever they're comfortable, when they're not comfortable. So, we're gonna be fishing right around this area. I like this a lot because you've got real shallow water You've got a boat dock back here that's going to give them some really good cover and you've got this kind of this this little creek ledge right here where they can go to, you know, to get in and out of deep water really quick if they're not comfortable. You know, if they're if they're wanting to be in deeper water, they can move there. If they're wanting to be in shallower water, they can move there. Um, this is a really good spot. Really, really good spot. If you guys can find something like this, it will produce. So let's go check that out and uh, and I hope that you guys have found this uh, helpful. If you guys have any questions, just please drop them in the comment section below. Uh, but let's go get after some chat. All right, guys. So get your net ready. I advise getting your net ready before you get up here, but I'm not always the smartest person. All right. And I made a video how I throw a net. If you guys don't know how to be sure to go check it out there we go good throw see we're gonna start our way kind of in this little mouth and work our way back it gets real shallow back there it's real shallow right here too oh there we go 
There we go. Here's a couple. There's two good ones there. Well, that's how it's done right there, folks. Oh yeah, this one is freaking loaded, guys. <sighs> Look at that. Look at that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 